Urban sprawl is the development of land in suburban and rural areas outside of the respective urban centers. Urban sprawl converts valuable farmlands and fields into low-density neighborhoods of individual houses. Governments are spending more on providing public services such as transit, pipelines, and roads, and all of this costs a lot of money. There are definitely at least two sources of cost for the government for urban sprawl. Some of them are the private costs that they incur of development, such as connecting to sewer lines and connecting to road network. The second set of costs are external or environmental costs, and those costs are shared by everybody in the region. Some important environmental costs include things like decreased air quality from increased car emissions from higher commute times, or increased impacts on groundwater quality of suburban development. So why does Super Sprawl happen? Can governments just help people to live closer and cut down their expenses? To answer that, we have to take a look at the economy, precisely the way things are priced. Currently, our services are priced according to average cost. Let's look at a hypothetical situation here. Services, including roads and external infrastructure for an urban land cost $10, and those for suburban land cost $20. The government will charge all costs of servicing by averaging costs based on the number of development rather than size. In this case, the urban lands overcharge $5 to subsidize the suburban land. Average cost pricing results in cross subsidies. Things are not charged for what they really cost. Good, sustainable, smaller things are charged more to subsidize costly alternatives. So if a municipality uses average cost pricing and charges developers the average cost of development between both suburban and urban development, there are two problems with that. One is that, as I already discussed, their costs for suburban development are higher than for urban development. So the developer is facing the wrong price signal. They're facing a price for development that's too low. The other problem is that the developers pay the same cost for every unit that they develop. The result is that they end up developing too much, way beyond the point where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit. So this also distorts the incentives of the suburban residents. They're seeing a price for that suburban house that's too low from a social or economic perspective that gives them the incentive to buy more houses in the suburbs over houses in a denser urban area. Problem is, many people today prefer to live in larger houses in a suburban environment, and politicians, in wanting to follow the wishes of the people, inevitably ends up granting the desire to the best of his or her ability. And people view this as good politics because they see the government acting upon their wishes, and this allows sprawl to further develop. So how can we break out of this vicious circle? Often, people feel that they get more of the larger land by paying relatively the same price as the narrow plot when in fact, the price is subsidized by others who live in urban centers. One way to fix this is to price things so that it reflects the actual cost. No more cross-subsidizations! This is called marginal cost pricing. So instead of having the price of the land's total and divided in half, the government will accordingly charge $10 for the small land and $20 for the larger land. This way, there is a greater difference between the prices and people will rethink before they buy the suburban land.